it really got me thinking, what does fandom actually does to your brain? Welcome to my singing channel. My name is Jorgelina. I'm a vocal coach and today I want to share with you some adventures that I had as a vocal coach but in fan mode. When I was um, 11 years old, the Backstreet Boys were huge. And I already liked music by then. I already was a musician. But when I became a fan of them, I felt a lot of passion for music all of a sudden. And it was a, a very wild, powerful motivation to keep on learning music. So I do think they are some of the reason why I became a vocal coach at the end. Anyway, the Pastry Boys are uh, much older now. Back then they were quite huge. They were, you know, filling stadiums uh, everywhere they went. It was very, very wild. As years passed, of course, they became more mature in age and the fans as well. Now they are in their 40s and 50s and fans like myself are in 30s and 40s. Anyway, of course, the market has changed a lot. One of the things with bands is that artists that want to be really huge, they usually market to the teenager people because those are the ones that are listening to new music and spending a lot of money in them. So the Bastard Boys are obviously focusing on their existing market in their hardcore fans that um, are the people that know they still exist and they are still releasing new music and all of that. So anyway, they did this big party for their 31st uh, birthday as a band in Cancun, Mexico. It was a wild four day party and I put aside my vocal coach mode for four days. Well, kind of put it aside. And uh, yes, I went there to, to heal a uh, teenager me because when I was very young, they did go to Argentina and I wasn't allowed to go to any concert back then. People might say, oh, it, it was a silly dream. But of course, back then, if you are a fan of any musician, you know that it's, it, it might seem very silly, but it is important to honor your dreams. So anyway, my dreams were not fulfilled back then. And I took this opportunity to heal teenager me that didn't feel listened to. <laughs> In that sense, it was great. Now, it was a super interesting experience. I've been posting some shorts about it that you can watch, but I'm gonna say it was an extremely intense experience. Firstly, the, the most visible thing is that I thought that, of course, you know, 35, I was one of the youngest back then. I was 11 when Millennium was released and Millennium was huge. So most of the hardcore fans are even a little bit older than myself. And so I thought, well, you know, we are a little bit older. I'm sure it's going to be a very civil event. Not so much. The event was great. It was filled with uh, Bastard Boys activities, which was great and a lot of fun. They gave two concerts and there was a show by a tribute band that was great. Uh, Jason Derulo also gave a concert, but I had to miss it for other reasons. And then they also had a lot of other activities hosted by the Bastard Boys, like a guacamole class in a karaoke competition, single out game show, volleyball tournament, a party hosted by DJ Kevin, and a variety show by Brian. If you are a big fan of any artist, as you might uh, understand, that was really great <laughs> to be able to spend so much time with you know, people you grew up with. It was great. And they are hosting, the Playa Luna are hosting other events. I'm not sure if I would do it again uh, with any other artists or with them um, because it was advertised as an interactive experience. But in reality, and coming back to the fans I was talking to you about, it was actually really, really hard to get a good spot at any of the events. Ever considering going to some events of Playa Luna, you have to have this on mind because the reality is like, I thought it was gonna be a more private event. In fact, I didn't know that the Bastard Boys still had so many super hardcore fans. So I thought it was going to be, you know, a chilling event that you could just go to the activities at the time they started and that everybody would be able to watch it. But in reality, the most hardcore fans, they actually were quite quite mean. <laughs> they will just go super early and save ghost spots for their friends that weren't there with, you know, making circles of empty space with towels, bags and chairs, all sort of things. And they would pretty much bark at you if you got any close. So the reality is that not only hardcore fans, but also aggressive fans were at the front. And they were the only ones that always got to interact with the Bastard Boys. So in that sense, it wasn't that good because I was always, of course, 
a little bit at the back. It was really hard to see them. For some events, there weren't even screens. In that sense, it wasn't what I wanted. It wasn't what I was expecting. I am disappointed at the fact that no one was actually controlling that. If you were more of a quiet person like myself, you were out and you had to deal with, with some aggression as well. In fact, some people actually got hurt. So not fun. And of course, not only that, but like a lot of people were pretty drunk. So that is definitely something to have on mind when you go to these events. Have that on mind, it can happen and it's good to be prepared. Another thing I, I was disappointed about is that for every game, only a few people were selected to participate. I didn't get selected for any of them. I will have liked that, you know, everybody will have a, an opportunity to interact either of, um, with an autograph line or something like that will, will have been great. But there were some good things, of course, like now that they are smaller, I mean, their fan base, of course, is smaller now that we are older. It is great to have the opportunity to do these things with you, spend so much time with them, four full days of oh, that was great. In that sense, uh, it was great. But I think it, I, I was a bit sad through the event because I was just observing how some people became really aggressive and, and actually quite jealous. Some people not only wanted to interact with the boys always, but they also wanted no one else to do it. And that was very sad for me to see. So it really got me thinking, what does fandom that's to your brain because of course we are not teenagers anymore in my case i'm also a vocal coach so as much as i enjoy the shows and i am able to enjoy them i know they are people <laughs> and i i know how they do what they do it really got me thinking what does fandom actually does to your brain because some people were acting as they were acting when they were you know 12 13 and they were bastard boys fans back then i got the impression that fandom uh, does something to your brain that it doesn't change with time obviously i will investigate about that because it's a very interesting topic right now for me but isn't that interesting it got me the impression that when people were in wild fan mode they were back to primitive they were wild and this is people that you know have families and careers and they are in like their 40s what does it actually do? What does it move? <laughs> Super interesting. The other thing that it got me thinking is what does being a fan means now? Of course, we can have a different opinion of what a fan means. Calling yourself a fan of someone, does it involve you getting into that weird state of mind? Or is being an admirer of a band and enjoying them and supporting them enough? Or are there different types of fans. I'm not sure. But anyway, that was all about my little trip. Will I recommend it? Well, I will say it's not for everyone. For me, it's actually not <laughs> because of this high sensitivity thing that I have, but it would have been if I knew how it's going to be. If I knew what to expect, I think I would have had a, a much, much better experience. Of course, it was still enjoyable. As I said, it's always great to see your favorite bands, but it's also great to know what to expect. So if you went there, let me know in the comments how it was for you. And if you didn't, you know what to expect for when you go, because apparently they will keep on coming back for more.